Question two. There's a circle drawn, here's its equation, and there's a line which intersects the circle and you have to find the points of contact. Well, get that into suitable form for substituting, isolate a variable, y will do nicely. So I've got y equals 2x plus 5, I'll call that 1. Here's the equation of the circle, I'll call that 2. Ah, I can't help doing this. Don't need it for part A, but as soon as you see the equation of a circle, I'll just automatically have to do that. It's like picking at a scab, I can't help it. Automatically put down its centre and its radius. You know you're going to need it later. You know you want to. So what have I got? 3 squared plus 1 squared. Take away the negative 30, so plus 30. So that's 10 and 30, so that's root 40. I'll not simplify it yet, just to see, just in case I do need it. I don't need it in part A, but it's there and it's ready and waiting. So, intersections. Intersections. Substitute 1 in 2. And there, off you go. So, whatever you see y, you write 2x plus 5. So I've got x squared plus y. 2x plus 5 squared minus 6x. Whoops! Minus 2 times y. 2x plus 5 minus the 30 equals 0. Right, get these brackets out. x squared plus another square bracket. So that's 4x squared, twice the product, 10x doubled, 20x. Square the last, 25. Copy that down. Minus 4x, minus 2 fives are 10, minus 30 equals 0. Then, what have I got that bracket for? Add it all up, I've got 5x squared. And at this point you're thinking, I hope the rest are full of 5s. For the x's, I've got a 20, take away a 10, so that's plus 10x. For the numbers, I've got a minus 5, minus 15, equals 0. Straight away, let's knock out those 5s because it is an equation. Plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Factorise that. Nice and easy, just x can only be 1 and 3. The plus goes to the bigger one, must be opposite signs. So I've got x equals 1 or x equals negative 3 for the points of intersection. Find the y coordinates. Put them back in. So x equals 1 in this one here. Nah, I'm just kidding. Put it into that one, it's much easier. So x equals 1 in 1 means that y equals 2 times 1 plus 5 equals 7. Now, quick reference to the diagram, which one's which, because P and Q are mentioned. It's got P here and Q here, and supposing that orientation to be correct, then that should be the first one, that should be the negative 3, so it's Q that I've got just now. So Q is the point 1, 7. Then X equals negative 3 in equation 1 means that Y is going to be 2 times negative 3 plus the 5, negative 6 and 5 is negative 1, which means P is going to be the point negative 3, negative 1. So there's the first part. Find the coordinates of P and Q. Okay, I did it the other way round, but there they are. Then the second part. This diagram, diagram 2, shows the circle from A in the lower one, according to that orientation, and a second congruent. Congruent means identical. Same size, same shape which also passes through these two points, so they share that common chord there. Determine the equation of the second circle, it's always the same. You want the equation of a circle, you need to know where's its centre, what's its radius. Well, its radius is easy, it's the same as the first one. Where's its centre? Well, I just need to travel through this line at right angles. Better distinguish between them, I'll call that C1, I'll call that C2, so I'll call that C1, but I'll just call that R, because it's the same for them both. Well, all I need to do is use displacements. How much do you need to move to get from the centre to that point, which will be the midpoint because of the symmetry in circles, then move the same again to get to C2. Just call that point N. So N is going to be the midpoint of PQ, average of the coordinates. So N is going to be the point negative 2, half, negative 1, 6, half, 3. N's the point 1, 3. And then you just have to think, how do you move from C1 to N? You could just write that down, but I think I'll set it out formally. So how do you go from C1 to N? Because I think there's a big bucket full of marks here, and all I've done so far is found a midpoint. There's another five marks to allocate. Even if there's only really just one bit of thinking left, still, why complain? Stick them in your pocket. But I've got C1 to N is going to be N minus C1, negative 1, 3, take away 3, 1, 
So that's going to be negative 4, 2. What that says is, to go from C1 to N, I go back 4, up 2. Let's put a bit there. If you go back 4, then you go up 2. Now obviously, that's going to be the same then, because of the symmetry, as going from N to C2. So from N to C2, I'm going to do the same. Go back 4 and up 2. So you could get the answer straight away. There's N. Go back 4, negative 5, up 2, 5. There's your answer. I want to set it out because there's piles of marks wanting a home. So we'll put down, we'll put C2 would be N plus NC2. N was negative 1, 3. The move was negative 4, 2. So that's gone to negative 5, 5, which means that C2 is negative 5, 5. Now another thing I need. I know it's radius. I'll put a wee note. R equals root 40. I'll not simplify that, because I'm just going to square it back again. So I need, now I need the equation. What's that? X minus A squared. <clears throat> y minus B squared is R squared. So in this particular case, it's going to be X take away negative 5, which is X plus 5 squared. Y take away 5 squared is root 40 squared, which is 40. There's question 2.